Public Access Television is not responsible for program content. This program is produced by Anchored in Faith Gospel Church of Oxford, Iowa. Reverend Linda Hahn, Senior Pastor. The latest release of our full-length cable TV telecasts are now prominently posted each week, beginning Sunday evenings on YouTube, youtube.com slash anchored in faith. Search for anchored in faith, all one word, in the search box for smart TVs and Roku TV viewing. It doesn't change. Unchanging. <coughs> Hallelujah. Unchanging Word of God. Isn't it nice to know that something is right and it stays right? I don't care what men may say. I don't care what the liberal scholars might do. This is the Word of God and I know that it's true and you can't water it down. You can't cut it into. It's real. Amen? We've been preaching on those who are called, chosen, and elect, and ordained for the purpose of God, and we've been doing it for a long time now. We went through peoples, and we've seen a people created, and we saw that God had called out a people to be his chosen people of the old covenant. Amen? Yeah. And his chosen people have been called through peoples and, and by... And, and, and by the ordained hand of God that he has put this thing together. And now we are entered the book of, and we've seen what God's purpose for the end times would be with the prophecies in, in, in the 49th chapter of Exodus, amen? And, and God give us light into what we can see in our present day of where his people are. And now we're going to go into the book of Exodus. And we're going to see how that God took Exodus, we're going to start in chapter 1, and I'm just going to do an overview, so I'm going to read a verse here and a verse there until I get to where I want to go, amen? Which will just drive you crazy, but I'll tell you which one it is, because I can't, if I read it all, I'll stumble through here the whole sermon reading. My reading is horrible. I can preach, but I can't read. Or, I mean, I read, but I can't say what I'm thinking or something. Anybody else can as fused as I am? Chapter 1, now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Eshkar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Nephetali, Gad, and Asher. And of all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls for Joseph who was in Egypt already. 70 went in, made 71 with him already being there. Amen. Just to let you know, I was right again. Somebody argued with me Bible study one night that there were 75. I said there were 70. I didn't look it up. By golly, I was right. <laughs> wasn't you, Jim? Wasn't you? It was somebody else. Somebody else that always likes to argue. Got an argumentative spirit. Hallelujah. 70 went in. Of the 12, 13 tribes of Israel. Me and Joseph get split. Ephraim and Manasseh. Listen, that ain't very many people. Seventy people are going to go into Egypt, and they're going to become the great nation of Israel. And when they finally come out, there'll be over three million men. That's a fair increase. It's a fair increase. Now I'm going to give you some legend, some history, some stuff that will blow you away. You don't have to believe me. A lot of this stuff that I teach you, you don't have to believe it. You go research it yourself, then you will figure out that it's right. If you really want to dig. 
If you don't want to dig, just believe me. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls from Joseph, as was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, all the of that generation, the children of Israel were fruitful, increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. And there rose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Okay, if we look historically, if we look to legend, and history and legend are very similar. In fact, legend usually better than history, it's seldom rewritten. History's always rewritten. In the history of the United States has changed so much from when I went to school to what the books are seeing now. It's ridiculous. They just write out everything they don't want. Crazy. But history and legend tells us that Egypt, just like Israel was, was a divided kingdom. Okay? North and the south. In the south with Goshen. It was the good land that was given to Israel. And, and legend tells us of, and this will make more sense to you when you get, to, legend tells us of, of the shepherd kings who ruled over Egypt. Now, that really makes sense, doesn't it? These shepherd kings ruled over Egypt for some generations. And they were over the southern kingdom. And the southern kingdom of Egypt was dominant over the regime of the pharaohs that was in the north. They ruled Goshen. So they increased. You see, you get this notion from, from just, because it's just an overview. The Bible just gives you an overview of the history. That they went in there and right away, as soon as Joseph died, they were all in slavery and they increased greatly while they were in slavery. You're not going to go from 70 to 3 million in slavery too quick. But they were dominant. They ruled. Oh, there's a lot of stuff here. Lord, help you. They ruled. But the time came that the northern kingdom of the old pharaohs, the old dynasty, took over. And they said, this, this is scaring us. There's way too many of them down here of, of these Israelites ruling in Goshen. And so they overtook them. Their armors overtook them and they put them in bondage. Oh, Lord, there's... Should I teach all this stuff, Doug? And blow you guys all away. Well, I've talked to it in Bible study too. Should I put this out over the airwaves and they'll figure I'm completely nuts? I know they do. So oh, here you go. Yeah, I just like to have somebody. Go ahead, go out there. You theologians think you know something? You just come back and disprove what I've studied out for 50 years, just once. And you'll find out that if you do, I'll change my mind. But. Pretty well got this stuff sorted out after studying all this time. Out of that, oh, we've got some peoples that come out of there. Okay, there were, we're going to go to Moses, and we're, we're headed for Moses right away. We're going to, and we're going to talk about the Exodus, amen? But before I can talk about that Exodus, I've got to talk about the first Exodus, which you're only going to find out from legend and history. What happens when a regime falls? Anybody knows a regime's fall? You ever seen some great nation, warring nation, something going on in, in, in the world? What happens when, uh, when they fall? What happened when Hitler fell? Hitler himself, they think, committed suicide. But where did the leaders go? Huh? Argentina, Brazil, except they went out the back door and went and settled someplace else. That's what we call the back door exodus out of Egypt. There were leaders who went out the back door. It, oh, Lord, I really want to stir some people up. Why do I got to tell you all this stuff? I can't help myself. Okay, if you look in 2 Maccabees, which the Orthodox Church considers Scripture, the Catholic Romans consider it Scripture, the Armenians consider it scripture. The Protestants consider it valuable history. Consider it however you want it. Okay? I consider it at least valuable history. You don't have to argue about it. Everybody considers it that. 
And it says in there that they were some correspondence between the Israelites and the Greeks, and they said, we find out we're brethren. Where did they come from? Out the back door. I thought this Bible study the other night. Why do you think Greek, here's a, here's a, here's a thing that'll, why do you, you ever see Greeks dance? Okay. Do you ever see Israelites dance? Do you see any similarities? It's all the same kind of everybody, it's the same kind of thing. Well, that's because, huh, yeah, yeah, okay. So a lot of these people, that's, and I don't know where some of the other ones went, but anyway, uh, we have scripture, or we have history, the uh, out of Maccabees that, that tells us, so, so these guys went out the back door. So the leading class went out the back door, okay? And so when all the leaders chickened out, you got no leadership. Amen. You got all these people. You think these people could raise up and not be taken over by the, by, by the pharaohs, wouldn't you? You got all these people. There's more of them. You know why? Because when the leaders bug out. Get out of town, man. Then the sheep are just like the church now. Yeah. I didn't even figure on brothers. Yeah, I didn't figure on preaching. Then when, when the leaders are a bunch of chickens and they run out the back door and they don't leave anybody there to take care of it, they go out the back door. The people, the sheep are scattered. They didn't have anybody to stand for. See? They always had to have a leader. You, you got to understand, even as we come out of there, we got all these pe people and we got to go later on when we get through Moses. You got to understand that when Moses, they. They, they were scared to death. Moses is going to die. They, well, what are we going to do? We don't have this Moses. You know, as soon as Moses is gone, they're scattered and they follow the pagan gods. Amen. Excuse me. Okay. I didn't know I was going to go that far that fast do that much. Anybody say, you get it all? Did you catch it all? And it said unto the people, behold, the people and children are more mightier than we. Come, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and come to pass that when they fall out at any war, that they join also into our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. So they put them in bondage because they lack the leader. Amen? And so we're, we're going to talk about Moses, who was one of the called, chosen, elect, and ordained of God for purpose. He had a purpose, and this purpose had to be fulfilled. And I'm just going to give an overview of this. I'm not going to read it all. Listen to this. We're going to kill all the male children. How many times does the devil try that trick? How, how often is he going to do that? Every time somebody comes along that's going to give him trouble, he's going to kill everybody. He tried it with Jesus, amen? Go kill all the children in Bethlehem. Kill them all here. Kill them all there. <laughs> Where do they hide out every time? Egypt. His people once too. We'll find that when we're. Serious. He said that there was a, he's, Egypt is his footstool. Kind of weird. You got a use for him. Had a use for him. Egypt was his footstool. Oh, I'm gonna use him for a purpose. There's a purpose to the Egyptian people, and that was to hide out and let people Israel increase. Good land there. Good stuff to eat. Everybody gonna grow fat. And so they're supposed to kill all the male children. But two Levites, now remember the promise of the Levites from, from Genesis 49 was that they were going to be the priesthood and that they were going to scatter. They wouldn't have possession. Just remember it from last week. Don't forget this stuff. So God could have chose anybody out of there. He could have saved any male child he wanted to, but he saved Moses because Moses was a purebred Levite. And there was a, uh, chapter 2, and there was a man of the house of Levi and took a wife for the daughter of the Levites. And she conceived, bare a son, and she saw him, and he was a goodly child, and she hid him for three months. And we all know the story. You've seen it from the Ten Commandments. And she made her a thing. She made her a little old basket, and she put him in the river. Oh, Lord, if we could just, oh, the, oh, I'm starting to get more revelation as I preach. 
And the river represents the spirit of the living God. And he was put into, this, into the river that the river might carry him where he needed to go. And if you get yourself into the river of God, into the spirit of the living God, it'll carry you where you need to go. Amen? Get into the basket, which is the protection of Christ. Get into the basket. Get into the river and be swept on downstream. Learn a little bit. Grow a little bit in God. Don't stay the same. Hallelujah. The reason so many pastors don't really trust me is because they just don't want to study like I study. They don't want to know everything because it's scary to walk outside the bounds of, of just a little old saving faith. Thank God they're saving people. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And as me and Brother Doug were discussing earlier for just a minute, there's so many little groups. There's so many little groups that have some knowledge, that have some wisdom, that really know some stuff, but they can't seem to stay in the middle of the thing. they got to go off on some tangent. Amen. Take a piece of God's truth and overboil it. See? All these truths I lay out to you, you could lay them thing out and you could make yourself a cult. And just, okay, this is it. So we, chosen people. Well, the chosen people. So we're the only chosen people and we're the only ones and, and we're it. And the rest of the world is dung. And, and, and so they're not even really human and they're subhuman. And, and all of a sudden they mix in false religion, throw a little Darwinism in there and they end up with a mess. Everybody ain't just like them is the missing link. Huh? I don't... Here it comes. I don't care what your complexion is. We don't have... They're in Michigan. Our people of another deeper complexion are in Michigan right now. So they won't be here for a month probably. I don't care what your complexion is. There is some cult that says your complexion makes you the only true Christians. Uh-huh. I know ones that are of the very dark color that say, and they have theologies, and they have such a, this is it. We're the chosen people, and everybody else isn't. You guys don't know this stuff. You, you, you ain't studied it out. You, you, in fact, I don't, sometimes I don't think you ought to. You might go off on one of them tangents. And there, there are those who are of the Hispanic persuasion that believe they are the only chosen people of God. And everybody else is somewhat less. And of course, everybody knows, most of them are in here, white Aryans. You know, those are the white Aryan persuasion that believe they're the only chosen people of God. They're the only ones called or like elect ordained of God. They're the only ones. Amen? It's true. It's just nuts. But, I mean, most of us think of it, you know, you've... You've experienced some of the stuff. Oh, boy, this will bring him on. you experienced some of the stuff with the Ku Klux Klan and some of that stuff. It means you're of, of the white race. You don't know that they got the same kind of notion in other races that they decided that they are. Amen. Jesus. What Jesus say? Neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female. It didn't make no difference where you come from. That's if the call of God's come on you, you've answered it. Amen? I don't care if you're speckled. Well, by the way, David was. He was red-haired, freckled-faced boy. Amen. Hallelujah. There ain't very many people the Bible tells you what color they were. David is one of them. I don't know if Solomon was really black or not. Some say it was just his heart. It's hard for me to think of Red hair, he's flicker floats boy having a black child, but it could it could happen. I don't know exactly what color Bathsheba was. Everybody said, huh. Well, get your minds to stir around. I mean, keep your brains working. But he was called, and he was of the Levite tribe, and he was put in there, 
and he was picked up by the Pharaoh's daughter, and, it, and then she went and got the Hebrew woman. How, how can God work things out like that? Look for a woman to be a wet nurse. And it turns out to be mama. Oh, God wasn't in it at all. God is able. He's able to bring things around. He'll take things that don't look right and make them right. He'll make things that look like they're evil and turn it into good. Amen? Hallelujah. For those who are his. And so she nurtured him up. And then she he was raised up as the daughter of Pharaoh. I mean the son of Pharaoh. Daughter. Good grief. As the son of Pharaoh. Amen. He was in line to become Pharaoh. She kept it hidden. Nobody knew who he was. Huh. Hmm. Now you've got to understand that these Israelites, when well, we're talking about peoples and what they, they that uh, this Israelite had to look something like an Egyptian or they wouldn't have thought he was one. This particular one. Think about that. I mean, if you walked around and, and had a white stamp on your head that says Israelite, would it just flash like, the, like my Jesus sign in the yard, you know, all the time, that flashed all the time. Everybody know you weren't. Right? They must have blended right in. Because they didn't know. Think of that. Blended right in. Raised up. Now, where would Moses be if he was a citizen of the United States of America right now? Say he was born the same day I was. Say he was going to bring the chosen people out of the U.S., where would he be? Anamosa, Mount Pleasant. Maybe he was in Iowa, huh? Federal penitentiary. That's what they do with murders. They lock them up. Oh, it might have only been manslaughter. He might have only got nine, ten years. I don't know. Let him out after a while. It's kind of spur of the moment deal, you know. Huh? All they did with him was run him out of town. God had a purpose for him. Remember the old deal where they'd run somebody out of tar and feather and run him out of town on a rail? That's kind of what happened to Moses. Sent out into the desert. Well, where did Jesus go when he needed to get next to God? Separated himself from the people, went out into the desert where he could see God's creation. He could get out in a separate place where he could get next to God, where he'd get away from the turmoil of the city. Yeah. Where Moses could get away from the turmoil of the three million. God made it happen. How many times do you know? Oh, you. How many times do you know that you go out somewhere and God does something for a purpose and is trying to draw you close to him and you get comfortable there. Christianity, true Christianity should not be comfortable. You're happy prosperity people, I just thumped you in there. It should not be comfortable. Your spirit should be yearning for more of God. You should be drawn into God. You should be getting next to God. You should not just be happy with where I'm at. I've seen people say, I'm comfortable where I'm at. I, I don't want to, you know. They, they might say, you know, I've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speak with other tongues, but I want to stay in the fellowship I'm in because my friends are there and, and then they don't believe it and they say it's of the devil, so I just have to hide it under a basket. Say amen. I know 
They'll say this, and I, I know it. I see them say, I know these people. I, I, they come, and I'll do it. They'll come in here and sneak in here, and I'll baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then they go on back to where they were. Don't you tell anybody, but I know it's right, so I want to get right. As they reveal them. Huh? Okay, I don't care. If you come to the conviction to do something right, scriptural, and the way the Bible says, I'll do it the Bible way, amen? And I just let the Spirit of God come over you and overwhelm you and change you, and I see him raised up. Start speaking in other tongues as God promised when you walk in obedience. Amen? Hallelujah. Press into God out in the desert. Some of, them, some of those are sitting in churches that are spiritual deserts. Amen? Find God in the desert. He found God in the desert. Found him a wife, too. Start taking care of sheep. Well, I got a feeling, ooh, Jesus. Anybody other else in here ever messed with a whole bunch of sheep? That, that, God must have a sense of humor, man. When I was in 4-H, I got me a bunch of sheep. And, and uh, he must have been training me for the ministry, and I had already been called. I knew I was called, but I wasn't going to answer. I, I, I was called in the ministry, but I didn't want to go. I just didn't want to go. I knew how much misery it would be. If I knew how much misery it would be, it was way worse than what I thought. And so here I took care of these sheep. Dumb. Dumb sheep. Smelly sheep. And yet, rebellious. If you get, okay, there'll be a whole bunch of dumb sheep. Just wandering around, dumb sheep. And then the ram that I had was smart. I had me a rebellious ram. And, and you couldn't tame him by, you know, taking out his parts because then he wouldn't be no good to you. And he threw a really good little sheep. There wasn't a fence on God's earth to keep him in. If he couldn't go over it, he'd just knock it down. He had big old horns. And he would butt and beller, and he'd break out, and then he'd break into the hog pen where this high-dollar, high-fattening-up hog feed would come and just eat himself to where he just he was the biggest dog on him and just kept getting bigger. I couldn't keep him out of there, and he was really not good for him at all. But, you know, he, but he, he, and, and then you, you know what happened next? One day, this old rebellious sheep, Busted down the fence, and guess what followed him? All them dumb sheep. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all them dumb sheep who are up there eating on stuff they ain't supposed to eat that ain't good for them. <laughs> I wasn't the best shepherd. Couldn't seem to control them sheep. God was training I've had some of that trouble since I went into this shepherd of business. Some bullheaded ram bust down the fence and run over and people start eating stuff they shouldn't be eating. Amen? Get filled up with some nonsense. And there's enough of it out there. Like Doug said, there's every, there's every kind of little group out there you can think of that think they're... And they take some truth and they mix it with a bunch of... You know what they mix it with? Pure, unadulterated... Pride. Yeah, there ain't nothing in this world make you feel any better than you are better than anybody else, than everybody else. Make you feel big. God said we're supposed to be humble. Amen. Huh. He says, I, I'm, he says, I've got some sheep in all them pastures. Even some of them where things are so fouled up, there's still somebody in there that's got. A knowledge of me. What he's what he's saying. To come out of her. See in the book of Revelation, the sheep are scattered amongst all this false gods and all this, and he says, Come out of her, just like he did in Egypt. Amen. So here good old Moses going down the and he's out in the desert. And he's pretty happy. You know? He's one happy shepherd. He's got his sheep. 
He's got him a good looking wife. He's having a good time out there in the desert for 40 years. 40 years. My now Moses is 80 years old. You don't suppose, no, Lord, I hope not. Hope he don't send me off to do something different when I'm 80 years old and start all over again. My oh, Lord, have mercy on me. <laughs> Tell me to plant a church in Egypt or something. Oh, and now Moses, chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. Now Moses kept the flocks of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flocks to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burnt with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Now where it says Lord there, it's Yahweh. Now, let me give you some more history. Rattle your cages. There is a bush that grows out there that we should probably grow in harness because we could probably, and it's full, we could probably reduce our dependence upon foreign oil by growing these bushes. And the thing is full of oil. It's an oily plant. And, and the things tend to torch off in the hot sun out there. So a burning bush is not as an unusual it would seem in Iowa. There just ain't very many burning bushes in Iowa. They just torch off on their own. This thing, this is a scientific fact. These things just kind of light up, take off. But what's phenomenal about this bush is the bushes, when they catch a fire, like anything else that catches a fire, it burns up. And the thing don't burn. The bush is still standing there. In fact, when this whole thing is over, the fire goes out and still got green leaves. My God. This sight Moses had to see. He'd seen bushes torch off before. He'd stand there five minutes, they're gone. This thing doesn't go away. This bush is on fire. And an angel is speaking to him. How many of you ever had an angel speak to you? Open your ears. They're out there. An angel of Yahweh spoke to him. Oh, boy. And, and Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that the, he turned aside, God called unto him on the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Uh -oh. God has had an intention for Moses' life for 80 years. We're talking about witnessing people this morning. And he says, it is for only the Father. It's only to know. Only God knows the time or the season. Only God knows the time or the season. And Moses is out there looking at this bush. And this bush is burning away and it won't burn up. And God calls him. <sighs> he calls him. And, and, and he'd been hiding in the desert, and he's been running from God, and, and like a lot of you did, and a lot of like you on t TV or watching it. You've been running from God for years. He's had a call on your life, and you just ran. You didn't want him, and you've got to have a burning bush experience. And in other words, as it says in Acts 2.36, to be pierced in the heart, all of a sudden God has dealt with you to where you cannot ignore it. I must go see what this thing is. You guys didn't know there was this much stuff here, did you? 
You see, God's purpose and plan, the way he does things, doesn't change. He did it with Moses. He does it with people today. Here am I. He answered the call. And he said, draw, not nigh hither, but put off thy shoes for thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Recognize what you're walking into, my son, my child. My people, recognize what you're walking into. You're walking out of a fleshly world into a spiritual world. You're walking onto holy ground. You're walking into a place where God is God and he is sovereign. Don't take your call and election lightly. The Bible, New Testament says, to test your call and election to see that it's sure. Examine yourself that you're truly of the faith. If you say, I believe in Jesus and are living like the devil, you better do a little examining. Hallelujah. And he said, Stand on holy ground. Therefore, he said, I am the God, the Elohim of thy father, and the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses said to his, his face, for he was afraid to look, and hid his face, for he was afraid to look at the Elohim. And the Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egyptians and bring them up out of the land into a good land, into a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, into the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hebites, and the Jebusites. Therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come upon me, and I have seen the oppression where Egypt... Oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people out of the land of Israel. Moses was born for a purpose. He was born for a purpose. He was preserved for a purpose. He was put in the boat for a purpose. To bring the people out. Amen? You were born for a purpose. There's a purpose for your life. You are to be a child of the living God. He has called, chosen, and elected, and ordained you. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in this house where the church has spoken this morning. You would wither away from it with fear. Because entering into that holy ground is a fearful thing. Awesome respect for God we must have. That's what that word fear means there. Awesome respect. Not that we're afraid he's going to kill us, but just be afraid in, in, in an awesome, respectful way to have great respect for God. Amen? And now Moses starts to argue with God. How many of you have been called, elected, and ordained for a purpose and you argue with God? John Hahn did a lot of arguing. Why do you argue with God? Because you're fight, fighting the flesh, and the flesh says, I can't do it. Oh, Lord, why would they listen to me, Moses says? I am poor of speech. I stutter. That's what he says. I stutter. How many great preachers do you know stutter? Huh? You don't know, huh? There's a whole bunch of them stutter. A whole bunch of great preachers. Now, I don't know all of them that stuttered, but I know of a bunch of them. Oral Roberts stuttered where he could hardly speak. Couldn't hardly spit out a word. You know that? God healed him. Benny Hinn was the same thing. Whatever you think of them, they preach. God healed him. I knew a man. Dobbs is his name. That I always thought when I went to conventions where he was, that the guy was just stuck up. The guy just wouldn't talk to me at these preachers' convention. Everybody, you know, we all, they're nothing like a bunch of preachers because they all just love to talk. He's a bunch of gabble of gobblers, most of them, you know. This guy just kind of sit over in the corner. And I'd heard him preach, man. He's in a little trouble preaching. That's the only time he could talk. I mean, he tried to visit with him. He tried to talk to me. like that. That same afternoon, 
He got up and preached one of the best sermons I heard in my life. He yabba dabba a little bit at the beginning, and all of a sudden it cut loose, and he can just preach like Jesus himself. Because of the spirit of the living God was in it. See, God's going to take somebody that don't look like he can do it so that he can do it, because that way he, don't know it's, he knows it's God. If Moses had been a silver-tongued orator, it wouldn't have been a gift of God that he could have spoke to the people. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's got a purpose. And Moses said to God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers is sent to me, they shall say unto me, What is his name? And I will say unto them, the, Then God, the Elohim, said unto Moses, I am that I am. Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent you. Elohim, and I will to be. Boy, this is good. Right here. My explanation in here. Yahweh. And I will to be that I am. The atheist will say unto you, where did God come from? And God gave the answer right here to Moses. He says, I am the great will. I decided I will be, so I am. I decided that there would be a creation, so it is. I am because I want to be. If God ever decided he didn't want to be, then did everything disappear. is the will of the universe. He wills to be because he is. Hallelujah. And he is because he wills to be. Wow. There were some fellows on the TV the other night had a debate with the atheist on Nightline. And they did pretty good, but they didn't get this to them. Oh, maybe they did. They, they clipped it. They clipped it. They clipped it. They clipped it. And yet, the atheists look like idiots. They look just, and they said, and the, and the TV commentator, because you know our liberal TV, on their standard, on the, on the, on the, on the, the major networks, they said, uh, it was a draw. If I've ever seen, <laughs> that's the best they could do with the, for the atheists. Just leave. They could not actually say, man, those Christian guys just whooped them. But they, uh, maybe they did get to, you know, because they cut so much of it out, and still, they look so good against him. Because he wills to be. I am that I am. I will that I am. It's, it's, it's better translation. I will that I am. There'd be nothing if it wasn't for me. Hallelujah. We're going to wrap this thing up. And we stop right there. We'll talk about more about Moses next week. Go to the book of John. Hallelujah. Eight. Eight fifty two. And he said, the Jews unto him, We know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead in the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets which are dead? Who makest thou thyself? And Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. But in my father that honoreth me, of whom he say, he is your father. Yet we know him, but I know him, and I shall say, I know him not, I shall be a liar. And he said, the Jews unto him, thou art yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, verily I say unto you, before Abraham, I am. I was a little ragged there at the end, but you get it? 
Before Abraham, I am. Who was Moses speaking to? He was speaking unto Yeshua. Before Abraham, I am. I will to be. And this I am was wrapped in human flesh that he might come to save us. My Lord. He was wrapped in human flesh. Jesus that walked on the earth was fully God and fully man that he might pay the price of sin. So those that are called might have a way to get where they need to go. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You've seen the Father, you've seen me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No one has seen the Father, just the Son. At the time Moses has further discourse with, with God and he wants to see God and all he can see is his backside. The old covenant was a covenant of law. It was a flesh covenant. You don't eat this and you don't do that. And you... Amen? The new covenant. The spirit. He says you'll worship me in spirit and in truth. Amen. Jesus went to the cross and the curse of sin was broken. And when he gave up the ghost, there was a great earthquake. The veil was ripped from the top to the bottom. In the old covenant, once a year, the, the priest went in to, to throw some blood on there and put some on his ears and he put some there and he put some here and he poured it on it and they put a rope on him and, it, and if he wasn't holy enough, he died and they had to drag him out and send another. Because he could not face the I am. But when the sacrifice was made and the curse of sin was broken, he opened up that we may be able to walk into the Holy of Holies with him. Hallelujah. You see, further on, Moses is having real trouble. And Jethro tells him to delegate people to help him because he, he can't help, handle all these troubles of the people because the people are not looking to God because they're not able to look to God. They have to go to Moses, and, and he's the priest, and that's how they get to God, through Moses. was wore out from the much trouble with the people. But now, you can take your position, petition, your prayer, your request straight to God. Hallelujah. And not only that, one more scripture. Not only that, hallelujah. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he brought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him in the right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities 
power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also that which is to come. He's put all things under his feet, giving him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body and fullness of him that fulfill all in all. And you that he hath quickened, brought alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin, in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the princes and the power of the air and the spirit of the now working the children of disobedience. Among those we also had our con. con conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind by the nature of children of wrath. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherein he loved us even when we were dead in sins has quickened us together with Christ. We have the power of the living God residing in us. We have been quickened, brought to life in Jesus Christ. And in him, not in me, not in John Hahn, not in any preacher, not in any of you, but that spirit that dwells within you that God has given to you, that gift he has given to you, you have dominion over all the wiles of the enemy, over every force every principality, every demonic force, you have dominion in Christ. Hallelujah. Realize the greatness of your call. Realize the greatness of your election and realize the greatness of his power that resides within you. Hallelujah. Um, we've had a lot of people fail us in our lives. Parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters, pastors, priests, friends, co-workers, teachers, we've all, they've all failed us in some way, but Jesus says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He's one person that you can go to, you can cry to, you can speak out your heart to, and it's not going nowhere else. It won't go no further than his ears. Some of you out on TV land, You've been hurt. I said the hurt church has hurt me. People in the church has hurt me. I don't want nothing to do with God. He didn't do it. He didn't. He did not hurt you. Don't forsake him. Don't forsake Jesus. He loves you. He cares for you. Don't turn your back on him. Come back to him, people. Come back to Jesus. He died for you. He gave his blood for you. He gave his all and all for you. He came from this wonderful place in heaven, beautiful place up there, and he came down here so he may save us and one day bring us back up with him to bring us to the Father, bring connection to us to the Father God through Jesus Christ through Jesus Christ when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior 
and you pray to the Heavenly Father in Jesus' name. His blood covers you, makes you clean and righteous. And so we'll be able to come to the Father. There's no way to God Almighty Himself except through His Son, Jesus. Because in ourself and our body, we're not righteous and we'll never be righteous. But only what Jesus did on the cross made us righteous. I am righteous because of Jesus, not of anything I've done or can do. So don't reject him. He loves you. He proved that he loved you. Receive him this morning. Many of you watching this program that don't think the Lord loves you or have rejected you, he hasn't. Get on your knees right now. Bow down and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Let him come into your life. Let him give you that joy back, peace back, health in your body that the devil has tried to steal. The devil's a liar. He's a father of all lies. Don't let him have you, your mind anymore. that I'm going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ the rest of my life. Tell the Lord that you're going to follow him and see what, what the Lord's going to do in your life. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. Thank you, Jesus. For anyone who would like to get saved right now and turn away from your sin, Please pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I confess you right now as Lord and Savior. I ask you to come into my heart. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. In addition to our postal address, Anchored in Faith Gospel Church has several electronic means to connect with you. Find our TV episodes at youtube.com slash anchoredinfaith. Visit our website at anchoredinfaith.org. Our phone number, which is area code 319-828-4815. Our email is tv at anchoredinfaith.org. And find us on Facebook by typing at AIFGC into the Facebook search box. We are actually a small church. If you call our 828-4815 phone number, leave a short message and make sure to include your phone number so we can call you back since we do not have caller ID. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, P.O. Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa. The latest release of our full-length cable TV telecasts are now prominently posted each week, beginning Sunday evenings on YouTube, youtube.com slash anchoredinfaith. Search for Anchored in Faith, all one word, in the search box for smart TVs and Roku TV viewing.